the disappearance of certain animal species from the face of the Earth is a natural and not uncommon process, but it's much rarer to capture the last of them on camera. The people in this episode have managed to do just that. From the largest rhino and a giant primate to the unusual inhabitant of Australia, in this episode you'll see the latest photos of giant extinct animals. <coughs> Gigantopithecus Being big is very comfortable. You can eat whatever you want, walk wherever you like. In general, you'll not have any problems and worries at all. A huge number of ancient animals followed this path, and our ancestor, the largest primate in history, Gigantopithecus, was no exception. To make you realize how big it was, take a look at this last picture, after which none of people has ever been able to capture these creatures. It was probably the last encounter between man and Gigantopithecus in history. I wonder how the creature didn't show any aggression at all and held back. The man is so tiny in comparison with it, isn't he? Let's compare Gigantopithecus to other creatures. For example, it weighed as much as three gorillas. Can you imagine that? Gigantopithecus also had a jaw perfectly sharpened for chewing tough stems. It was this nuance that turned Gigantopithecus into a walking bamboo processing factory. And thanks to the size, a pack of hungry giant primates easily took food from other fans of eating high and tough grass – pandas. However, do not think that pandas and other animals united to take revenge on Gigantopithecus. Not at all. The colossal primate probably disappeared from the face of the earth due to its gigantic size and dietary preferences. Unlike pandas and gorillas, Gigantopithecus had to eat more frequently and for longer periods of time. This led to a slower metabolism, a potential killer in the unstable world of the Pleistocene era. In addition, their weight prevented them from climbing trees, so they had to eat only food from the ground. As you can imagine, that wasn't enough. Big Gertie Next, I will not talk about such an ancient creature as Gigantopithecus, but it's definitely worth your attention. I'm talking about a rhino, but not a simple one, but the biggest one in history. None of the people have ever encountered larger individuals in their lives. This legendary event took place in 1950 in Amboseli National Park, one of the most visited in Kenya, where the famous Mount Kilimanjaro is located. Surprisingly, until two years ago, this very place was considered popular with hunters, and ordinary people zealously protested against this outrage. Their requests were heard, the place was protected, and the rhinos, along with other animals, have not ceased to be in a trusting relationship with us. They were not used to us, which is why they were not afraid of people at all and even let them get close to them. This peculiarity helped people to make this interesting picture of the largest rhino in history. Rhinos are generally very large, but even so, Gertie stood out from the crowd with her incredible size. Lonesome George Let's start with some rather sad news. The tortoise you see in this picture here is a Galapagos tortoise. George was the only member of the Pinta Island tortoise subspecies. The animal was a symbol of the Galapagos Islands. Everyone tried to help him in one way or another, but it was all to no avail. Leading a solitary life and leaving no offspring, George passed away, thus completing the history of its subspecies. My time has come. Although the tortoise was more than 100 years old at the time of death, scientists believe that representatives of this subspecies may retain the ability to have offspring even at 200 years old. This lonely tortoise was discovered on Pinta Island in 1972. The animal was named after an American actor and people decided the tortoise to get married with other tortoise, but not everything turned out to be successful. At one time, scientists believed that George was not capable of reproduction at all. But this was not the case. The loner was guarded as best as they could. They pleased him in every possible way and waited for offspring from him. But 40 years of such a life came to an end, and the animal died in the status of a bachelor. But the procreation was so close, 
and it was necessary, not just for fun, studying the genes of George and his relatives, scientists have come to the conclusion that their genome holds the key to lengthening our life and even immortality. In addition, tortoises are known for their resistance to cancer. I hope the researchers will still find a representative similar to Giant George and resurrect the subspecies. Quagga I'm sure that almost none of you have ever heard of this beautiful and interesting zebra in your life, and you should have heard about it. Known for its unique facial expression and striped coloration, the quagga was endemic to South Africa. In the 19th century, it was distributed over vast areas, but its population began to decline dramatically due to hunting and habitat loss because of population expansion. The last wild quagga passed away in 1878, and the last quagga in principle died at the Amsterdam Zoo in 1883. Unfortunately, quaggas were not properly studied before they disappeared. There are only a few pictures and a couple of preserved skins, but this is not enough to fully reconstruct the image of this animal. However, thanks to modern technology, genetic work has been done which has shown that the quagga is a subspecies of the Burchell's zebra and can be preserved by restoring the population. By the way, do you know why the zebra was named that? It's because of the distinctive and amusing sound it makes. The alarming cry was very reminiscent of the word quag, which is why the animal was named so. But there are also mysteries that humans have not yet solved. For example, the coloration of the quagga. It's known that these stripes of zebras help individuals to merge into the dazzle, which makes it difficult for predators to hunt them. Also, in modern zebras, the number and distinctness of stripes decreases depending on the geographic location of the population. For example, southern animals and inhabitants of more arid territories have fewer stripes. Over time, evidence has emerged that striped coloration effectively scares away horseflies and gadflies. But this begs the question, after all, quaggas lived in the south, I would even say were the southernmost zebras, so why did they need such a clear and bright coloration? According to the hypothesis, such coloration played an important role in social life. In mixed dazzles, when fleeing from predators, different subspecies stayed with their congeners. Carolina parakeet This feathered creature could survive in the snows of North America, but ironically was exterminated by simple American farmers. The parrot lived on the southeastern coast of North America and even in the central and northern United States. With its thick plumage and advanced food-finding skills, the Carolina parakeet had no need to migrate in the winter. It seemed that this species could live forever, but in the 18th century, trouble came from where no one expected it. One day, a flock of Carolina parakeets flew into the center of the city and seriously disturbed the locals with their noise. They scared everyone so much that many people took this behavior as the beginning of the apocalypse or something equally horrible. However, nothing bad happened. For humans, Carolina parakeets, on the other hand, became the main object of hunting, and people began to shoot the birds. Besides superstition, there were many other reasons for the extermination. Farmers hunted the parrots because they were ruining their plantations, and clothing manufacturers did it for feathers for hats, which were fashionable at the time. Some, of course, did not follow the trend and continued to care for these cute creatures, but it was something very rare. It's not for nothing that this photo is considered one of the last to feature a Carolina parakeet. After 1926, these birds were never seen. Tasmanian Wolf And here's a picture of another animal that's nowhere to be found today. This is a Tasmanian wolf, and the photo was taken in 1936 in the Tasmanian city of Hobart. What's even sadder is that this photo was taken in September, just a few months after Tasmanian wolves were put under protection. However, no sooner had people taken meaningful steps than the last member of the species followed its congeners to the other world. However, it's not surprising. Fearing the formidable local predator that allegedly threatened livestock, the Tasmanian government declared a merciless war on the thylacine, as the Tasmanian wolf was also known. Hunters who provided the heads of killed animals as evidence were given bonuses. This outrage lasted for just under a hundred years, during which time the population dropped to critical levels. 
Armory Lion Unfortunately, no matter how strong and independent an animal is, like wolves or even lions, no one can stand up to humans with their weapons. And so this animal was exterminated. The last free-living Barbary lion was shot dead in the Moroccan part of the Atlas Mountains in 1922. And this is a picture where the animal is not yet aware of its terrible fate. The body length of these beauties reached 9 feet, and according to other reports, it was even closer to 11 feet. The weight of large males could reach up to 1,000 pounds. They hunted ungulates and were decorated with a thick, dark mane. In general, they felt great until Europeans came to Africa in the 17th century. At first, people shot the lion's food, but by doing so, they forced the lions to attack their own livestock. And this became a reason for the people to come into conflict with the lions themselves. Some species have disappeared irretrievably and remain only on the pages of history, and some can be brought back to life thanks to modern technology. Woolly Mammoth Mammoths are long extinct creatures. Today they are only talked about in books or drawn in animated movies. However, such pragmatic people as scientists decided to correct this misunderstanding. It occurred to them to resurrect a creature that lived tens of thousands of years ago. With the extinction of these giants, the rich flowering mammoth steppes disappeared, on which other large herbivores also fed – wild horses, musk oxen, moose. Where they used to live, I mean in the tundra, now there is nothing but frost and ruined flora. Of course, it had to be solved. In 2008, a group of Russian scientists set out to do just that. They used found fossils and deciphered their DNA. It was time to restore the mammoth, and three years later the process was 70% complete. It took another three years, and now the scientists were already transplanting the DNA they would recovered into an African bush elephant. And no, nothing like what happened in cartoons or movies happened. The animal didn't mutate into a woolly mammoth before scientists' eyes. Scientists encountered incomprehensible problems that prevented the experiment from succeeding. However, the research team is unlikely to give up on the task. At the very least, they are inspired by others who are already thinking about this discovery in their fields. For example, residents of Russian Yakutia have been specifically preparing a new home for this beast in recent years and are gradually restoring vegetation. Bedeloid rotifers Now we are going to talk about those organisms, the mere name of which repels. They resemble the most common parasites that feed on someone's blood. However, if it is commonly to destroy parasites and remove them, then on the contrary, they tried to resurrect these creatures. And in fact, after reading about their features, I can't understand how these rotifers need anyone's help at all. The fact is, they were incredibly resilient. They didn't care about drought, frost, lack of food, or even oxygen. In such unreal conditions, bedeloid rotifers curled up in a ball and slowed down the process of life activity to a minimum staying in anticipation of all the best. And then, one day, that moment in their life came. They curled up in a ball and waited, waited, and waited again. As a result, this process lasted more than 24,000 years until scientists found them in the permafrost. Of course, humans took them to much more favorable conditions, and guess what? The rotifers immediately resurrected and came back to life, as if they hadn't waited 20,000 years for anything. Previously, scientists believed that these creatures could last 10 years, but now the results have been surpassed thousands of times. The researchers additionally made sure that they found really ancient rotifers. Their genetic material was markedly different from the DNA of modern animals. Selecting 144 revived multicellular organisms at random, the scientists again froze them at negative 15 degrees Celsius. The ancient rotifers were able to survive again although they weren't much more frost resistant than their modern congeners. Hit the like button if you'd like to have such a superpower. Perinian Ibex By the way, if any of you still think that neither mammoths nor any other creatures can be recovered by humans, that revival is simply unrealistic and scientists will only breed a new species anyway, just listen to this story. In the year 2000, the last individual of the Perinian Ibex subspecies, also known as the Bucardo, died. It seemed that was the end of this creature. But fortunately for scientists, some researchers back in the 90s took a few skin cells from a female named Celia for the purpose of analysis and preservation in liquid nitrogen. As you can imagine, this came in handy for biologists, 
and they were able to reconstruct Celia's DNA, transfer it to domestic goat cells, and obtain about a half thousand embryos. Out of so many options, however, the scientists were lucky in only one case. Just one embryo went through the entire developmental cycle, and the animal was born. Unfortunately, as often happens in such stories, the creature died quickly due to lung deformities. However, the very fact that it was born and had a chance to live allows scientists to hope for the recovery of the entire population of the extinct Pyrenean ibex. Actually, it works the same way with other creatures, like it does with this one. Researchers at the Natural History Museum in London have recreated the singing of an animal that went completely extinct more than 150 years ago. The animal in question is a katydid species, which was a distant relative of the modern grasshopper, and lived in northern India and Tibet. It was first described in 1869, and since then the creature has never been seen or heard of. Only a single individual remains, which is preserved in a museum in London. Scientists went there, carefully studied this very individual, digitized it, and created a 3D model. Then, biologists studied in detail the structure of each wing of the katydid, which were responsible for the sound. Experts were able to determine the resonance frequency of the wings and recreate the sound of the insect's song. Because of the thicker wings and living in a cold climate, the creature produces a much lower and louder sound than grasshoppers known to all of us. Now a team of researchers is about to head to potential habitats of the katydid. If they can't find it here, people will set about recovering the species altogether. Passenger Pigeon As practice shows, a creature like the katydid is not the only one that has wings and is missing. Among the number of such creatures is the pigeon. No, of course, I don't mean just any pigeon. I'm talking about the so-called passenger members of the family. The date of its extinction is September 1, 1914, when the last pigeon named Martha died at the Cincinnati Zoo. But the species had been extinct even earlier in the wild, and the last wild bird was shot in 1900. Since people are familiar with the saying, as you brew, so must you drink, they have, as usual, started to revive the birds that they've killed. This work began more than 10 years ago. As a basis, scientists took a related species, the band-tailed pigeon. Generally, the restoration will consist of five stages. The first one is dedicated to deciphering and comparing the genomes of the two species. On the second stage, scientists will determine which genes in the genome of band-tailed pigeons will need to be edited. The third stage is the actual editing. As a result of the resurrection of the extinct species, birds should appear that are outwardly identical to band-tailed pigeons. But with a new genome, and after mating these birds, revived passenger pigeons will appear. The fourth stage involved the breeding of passenger pigeons in captivity, and at the fifth stage, they're planned to be released into the wild. Resurrection of the Pig Well, this story obviously will not leave anyone indifferent, so be careful. Its essence is that scientists from the U.S. began to implement the idea of resurrecting dead organisms. It sounds kind of optimistic, and nothing portends trouble. However, animals were used for the tests in the first place, of course. What can scientists do without them? In particular, they began testing their device on pigs. The idea of the scientists was that if the creature dies, its heart stops and blood stops circulating. However, the organs are still intact for a while and can potentially work. In this case, it's worth focusing not on the heart, but to offer the body a new engine that will temporarily replace it. To do this, scientists came up with a machine that speeds up the blood in the body and supplies it with additional substances that help in this process. Their machine pumped blood through the entire body, mimicking the pulse. It also fed both the brain and the heart. The hundred pigs that were purchased for the tests died. However, they still had attempts to resurrect. At times, the pig's limbs twitched or they came to their senses for a short time. Scientists consider this a great success and continue their research in this area. It's not always the case that people only resurrect those creatures which are long gone. Sometimes it's worthwhile to look at what's happening now and consider saving an endangered species. That's exactly what scientists did with the black-footed ferret, the cute creature you see. The extinction of the black-footed ferret was due to ranchers shooting and poisoning prairie dogs, which these predators fed on. Since 1979, the black-footed ferret had been thought to be extinct, but in 1981, a ranch dog in Wyoming brought home the body of the animal. Then scientists collected the remaining population of 130 individuals, and despite the fact that most of them died, they still managed to recreate new representatives of the species. 
For this purpose, the DNA of an animal that died more than 30 years ago was used. That's all, guys. Which animal would you personally like to resurrect? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you later.